I'm Margaret from Whimsy North and today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful baby blanket. It's super soft and snuggly using Knit Picks Snuggle Puff yarn. You can find this free pattern on my blog via the link in the description. What you're going to need for your supplies are four different colors of Snuggle Puff yarn by Knit Picks. You will need um, three balls of a main color. I chose to do white as my main color. That will be your bobble section and then the larger garter sections within your blanket. And then three accenting colors. So blue, yellow, and pink are the colors that I chose. You will also need a size US 10.5 knitting needle and a um, cord long enough for to hold all the stitches of the baby blanket on it. So this is a 24 inch cord and you will or 32 or 36 and you'll just make sure that all the stitches can stay on your needle. These are Knit Picks interchangeable needles. They are my favorite because you can switch them out. You have different cord sizes. Then you're also going to need a darning needle and a pair of scissors. So to get started, to get started, I'm going to use my main color. And today, I'm going to only do a small blanket. I'm not going to do a full size blanket. So today I'm going to cast on only 24 stitches to make just a small size of the sample of the blanket. What I like to you will be using a long tail cast on. What I like to do to estimate the tail for my long tail cast on is I take my yarn and I wrap it around my needle for the number of stitches. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So typically what I like to do is estimate that that's about ten stitches and then I'll fold that over and I'll say that's about 20 and then I like to give myself so that would be about 30 and I like to give myself a little tail then I'm going to make my slip knot pull that through so you can see how it tightens there and I'll place my slip knot onto my needle And then I'm going to continue with the long tail cast on. And to do that, I'll go under here, over through here, and back through that loop. Try that again. Through that loop. Under, down through through that loop. So you're kind of moving your thumb a little bit. Now I'm going to do that a little faster. So there are my 24 stitches that would count as my cast on. Row one, you knit across. Now, the stitches on your needle after your cast on can be a little tighter. So I'm gonna show you how to knit continental. 
So you would stick your needle through the front loop, grab the yarn and pull it through. Grab that tail all the way. So you go through the front loop, grab the yarn and then pull it through. And I'll show you a couple more of that continental. And now if you were an English knitter, you would hold the yarn in your right hand and you would put the yarn, the needle through, wrap it around, pop it through and off. Through the front loop, back and around, down through the middle and off. Through the front loop and off. So I'm just going to continue knitting this row until I get to the end. Okay, so now you can see that I have knit all those stitches for row one. I'm going to turn my work around and for row two, I'm going to continue knitting all the way across. Okay, so there is row two. Then I'll turn my work again, grab my working yarn, and this time for row three, I need to purl. So to purl, I'm going to bring my yarn to the front and purl those stitches. Now, continental, I would go into the front of the stitch, bring my yarn around, and come back out into the front of the stitch, bring my yarn around, come back out. If I was doing this English style, I would bring my yarn in, wrap my yarn around, Bring it off, bring it in, wrap it around, bring it off, bring it in, wrap it around, bring it off, bring it on, wrap it around, bring it off. I'm gonna switch back to continental and finish purling this section. Okay, so there we have the purl section. This is the right side. As you can see, there's this garter edge and then it's starting to be stockinette. And this is the back side. Now, as per the pattern, you repeat those two rows two more times. So I will meet you back here after the next two rows. Hi, I'm Margaret from Whimsy North. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. For more free patterns and knitting tips and tutorials, make sure to check out my website, whimsynorth.com, linked in the description below. Thank you. Okay, so I have finished the bottom portion of my blanket and this is the bottom stock net rows one through seven. And now I'm going to show you the bobble stitch. So one thing I forgot to mention when I was doing my other rows is that every first stitch 
is actually a slip stitch. So I forgot to show that to you on the first other rows. So you'll need to slip that first stitch of every row in the entire blanket. And that is just to give you a nice edge. So for this first bobble row, you slip the first stitch, then you knit the next two, and then this stitch is where I'm going to do the bobble stitch. So I knit into the front of the stitch, and then knit into the back of the stitch, and then do that again, knit into the front of the stitch, and knit into the back of the stitch. Then I can pull the stitch off. So you can see now I have one, two, three, four stitches on my needle from that one. Now I'm going to turn my work around and this time I'm going to slip that first stitch and then purl the next three. This makes a little bit of a smaller bobble. Then I flip it around again and then this side I slip two stitches and then I knit the next two. So here I have four stitches and I'm going to take the second stitch and cast it off over the first. Take the third and cast it off. Take the fourth and cast it off. And there you have the bobble stitch. So now going across, you will knit three and then do another bobble stitch. Turn it. Slip the first stitch, purl, 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 turn it around again, slip two, knit two, and then cast those remaining stitches off. And there you have bobble number two. So I'm just gonna continue on the rest of the row. Okay, and there I have all my bobbles. Now I'm going to knit the next couple of rows until I get to, um, I'm going to knit a couple rows 
That bobble stitch is the exact same stitch that you will do in the next bobble section. As you can see, there's the garter sec stock net section, the row of bobbles, another row of stock net, and then another row of bobbles, and then stock net again, and then you start the garter section going up. So I'm going to skip these bobbles and show you a trick that I have for the garter section. Okay, so first I'm going to knit two rows of stock net just to get a little bit of a barrier between the bobbles and the garter. And I will meet you back here. So now I've finished I like to pop my bobbles through a little bit, poke them out a little. So now I've finished the base garter stitch, bobbles, and a little extra stock net stitch. And I'm going to show you how to add in your colors. So the first color I'm going to do is this pink color. Now, what I like with all the different stripes that you have in your blanket, Every time you make a new stripe, you're going to need to cut the yarn in the back. So you can see here, I actually did it on this side. So you can see here how you weave the ends in in the back and you're going to have to cut each color because the distance between the colors is too far for you to carry this blue yarn up to here. Now you do carry, continue carrying the white yarn all the way up your main color you do carry that all the way up because you're going to use it every um, you're only going to have about two rows that you're going to need to carry but the rest of it you're going to need to weave it in and out so I'm going to show you the trick where you can do it as you go and then at the end all you need to do is just snip your yarn I like to do this knitting English style so what I typically do is I slip my first stitch like I do with every row. Then I take my pink yarn and I leave about a six inch tail. I put my needle through the next loop and I loop that tail around and knit that first stitch. Then I'm gonna go to knit the second stitch I make sure that I have my tail and my yarn and I twist them together making sure that I'm knitting with my working yarn. Then I go to the next stitch and this time I'm going to twist them back. See how I'm twisting them together, bringing that stitch forward. Go to the next, I take my tail and I twist them around. Then my tail up here and I'm still, you can see I'm still twisting the stitches. So as of right now, you can see my tail is following along. It's not down here. It's following along and being caught up here. I typically like to do this about 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I will seven, eight, nine, ten. And then just to make it so that this tail is laying flat, I'll just do one more. So it's about 11 stitches. Then, now my tail is kind of in the middle of my work. I leave my tail go and I continue knitting with just my working yarn. So I would knit all the way across. Actually, I would switch, I'll switch. 
switch it to an incontinental. Then you simply turn your work again to work back. And you can see I have my white over here. My tail is hanging down right in the middle there. And I'm going to knit this back. Now I knit all the way across to the end. Okay. Knit all the way across to the end. Then I take my scissors and I cut about a six inch tail. There's like a lot of stuff going on here. Want to make sure you can really see. Okay. Cutting only the pink working yarn, and I cut about six inch tail of the working yarn. Then I can wrap this back up. And set this color aside. Now I'm going to continue working with my white color, but here I have this pink tail. Here's my working yarn white that I'm going to do four rows of white. And now I have to weave in this tail. So I slip the first stitch again. And again, I like to do this English style. This time I'm going to continue twisting the yarns, but instead I'm going to make sure I'm always knitting with the white. So then I, this loops over, white goes under, white goes over, and I continue doing this until I have One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now I can drop that tail to the back. As you can see, I have both my tails here now. And then I'll continue knitting with my white, my main color. Now I'll show you, turn it around and knit back again. Okay, so now, as you can see on the back of my work, this is the back. I have these tails that are hanging down here in the middle. They are already woven in, wrapped through, and all I need to do is cut them. And then you're done. And then here's the front. I typically, and then what you would do is continue knitting with your white color.
for three for, for two more rows and then you would add in your next color and then another white and then your next color and then you would go back to the bottle section at the end <coughs> and keep going then you would cast off your work and you would have your blanket at the end so that is how you knit the bobbles and the weaving ends as you go for my summer throwback baby blanket.